I had the pleasure of interviewing Mr. Doug Weed, author of Game of Thorns. I like this man. I enjoyed interviewing him. When he first accepted my invitation to interview him, I was a little apprehensive, since I do have a show on Truth Frequency Radio called Voices from Afar. My initial thoughts were, if I let him do a simple puff piece and only talk about his book, I would not be true to Truth Frequency Radio. I was wondering, how much does he know? How much can I ask him? Might I scare him off by what we know here at Truth Frequency Radio? A little to my surprise, the man is a truther. He was honest. He shared. He held nothing back. And then came the really tough question of satanic ritual abuse of children. Many may call me a conspiracy theorist. I am a conspiracy researcher. But please, pay attention to Doug's answer, his reference to his wife, the clinking of a drink, and especially pay attention to when his phone rings, as if to say, you've said enough. One might think that after talking about the satanic ritual abuse of children, you may want to bring in a little biblical reference. I don't want to say to, but you listen to this interview and you tell me what you think. We're very well aware of the eugenics and the, the vaccinations, all of the chemtrails, etc. It, it's eugenics. Besides everything else, we have Fukushima, who is just slowly killing the planet with radiation, and the media doesn't talk about it. The question, the Podesta files and Anthony Weiner and the satanic ritual abuse of children, it's a fact. From what we understand, you know, you don't get to the top of the pyramid in politics unless you can be blackmailed. Bill's escapades and Hillary's escapades and Podesta's escapades, which are out in the open now. Are you aware of the satanic ritual abuse of children? And have you touched any of that subject? No, I haven't. I've seen, because uh, just just touring the internet, I, I, I've seen the, uh, the videos about the Bohemian Grove, that sort of thing. Uh, I, my wife is French, so uh, she's, we're very well aware of a few years ago the, the child abuse thing that happened uh, in the EU and where Belgium ministers were, were uh, uh, rounded up and were part of it. And the only other thing that I can say to that, so the short answer is no, but the only other thing I can add to it or say to it is I remember when I worked in the White House, we had a couple issues with diplomats, and it was very striking to me that these diplomats were charged with uh, uh, child uh, abuse and child pornography and slave trade, and yet were were retained at the State Department. Uh, I remember here overhearing conversations about how, how outrageous this was, and that's as close as I've come to them. I've never had anything direct that uh, I had direct knowledge of. We're aware of a very dark world, satanic ritual abuse, them living actually on the fear and abuse of children. And that's been a crusade of ours. And, you know, I didn't know if I'd be able to get into that. But, yeah, it's a subject that if you look into, it, it makes you, you want to buy two pitchforks and a tiki torch and, and bring down. <laughs> they, no, get, seriously, the guesstimate is anywhere up to 70 percent of that pyramid. And uh, Trump is very well aware of it. And I'm hoping he can do something a, about that. It's your show, Doug. Where would you like to take us? Donald Trump loved his dad. And uh, that night he came out, his thoughts were with his dad and with his brother. And there is this interesting moment with history that I could share with you. And I call it the man in the shadows. It's almost biblical. You remember the story in the Bible where the prophet Samuel, he shows up with Jesse and, and he meets all of Jesse's sons and he, he, he felt he was going to anoint one of them to be king. 
And when he's all done, he says, I can't understand it. I was just sure that it was one of your sons. But is this all your kids? Yep, that's everybody. I, I can't figure it out, the old Samuel says. Then finally, Jesse says, well, well, there's David. There's the youngest one. He's out with the sheep. And Samuel says, go get him, go get him. So they bring David in, and Samuel said, yep, this is the one, and he anoints him to be the king. So it's called the man in the shadows, and what, what it refers to is that all through history, uh, it's, not, it's not Joe Kennedy, it's Jack. It's not uh, Lawrence Washington, it's uh, George Washington. It's not Milton Eisenhower, it's uh, Dwight Eisenhower. So it has nothing to do with birth order, it has to do with which son is anointed to be the successor? In the Bush family, it was Jeb Bush. He was the one that was anointed. He was going to follow in his dad's footsteps. And uh, George was the, the clown. And so it was with Donald Trump. Freddie was the anointed son who was going to, and all the pressure was on him. His dad expected him to do things. And the the boy in the shadows, the man in the shadows, George Washington, for example, looked on with envy when his dad, Augustine, was dying. Uh, all the ironworks were going to Lawrence. Mount Vernon was going to Lawrence. All the land. Lawrence was the only one that really had an education. And the second son, George, had nothing. But George Washington was... 11-year-old boy at the foot of the bed, he, he was destined for greatness. And I could see that Donald Trump that night uh, when he won the election, uh, he, he had been with his dad. Uh, his dad had sent him away to military school, and all the hopes were on Freddie. Freddie became an alcoholic and died young. And so Donald stepped from the shadows and assumed this role. There's a moment where his dad put up the sign at the market in, in Queens, uh, Trump Market. And they said there were tears in old man Fred's eyes because he always wanted the family name to amount to something, to be something. It was, they, they had spelled it differently in years past, and it was like Dumpfy or Drump or something. And he wanted Trump to really be beautiful. And Donald made it beautiful. He built those golden towers. The sun would rise and sunset off the gold, the name Trump in New York uh, and Manhattan. But you could tell the night that he won the presidency, he, he talked about his dad, he talked about his family, and you could almost, I could almost hear him saying, hey, dad, uh, look at the name now. Look at the name now. Fascinating story. We'll see what he can do with it. <laughs> He's yeah. got it.